You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on into Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for USA Today for various SEC-related things, but on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everybody that we are free and available on all podcast platforms and we're on YouTube please make sure to subscribe all right Kentucky victors over the Vanderbilt Commodores 78 to 66 was the final score if you listen to last episode we did a breakdown of this game we did a preview and my final score prediction was 74 to 66 I was four points off go me I think that's the closest I've gotten this season uh, obviously not right but I, I mean hey You'll take what you can get. We're going to talk about the first half here, going to talk about the second half later on, and then some final thoughts, and we'll ask the question, did Kentucky check the four boxes that they need to in order to win uh, in the SEC? It's parameters that I've essentially set on, on Wildcat wins this season. All right, first half, a lot of scoring early. The pacing early on was absolutely beautiful. Tied tight Washington, speeding up the offense, slowing it down, stopping in transition when he knew he needed to, getting baskets inside, working the offense very well, kicking it outside, getting threes. Uh, Vanderbilt, literally for the majority of, like I think, the first 10 minutes or so of this game, just simply did not have an answer for the Kentucky offense. It was beautiful. Again, great pacing, great flow, great rhythm. Everything was going well for the Wildcats early on in this game, and Ty Ty Washington was a big part of that. He was scoring and distributing. He has great offensive game for a freshman. And yeah, I, I talk about Keon Brooks as the king of the two-point jumper, right? I talk about him uh, taking all, all these different mid-range shots and knocking them down consistently. I believe Brooks only made one uh, two-point jumper in this game. It's a shame. It's a real shame. Uh, but Ty Ty Washington took several, and he made several. So maybe he's the king of the two-point jumper, and I've just been assessing this all wrong uh, this entire time. Vanderbilt. Uh, showed that they could, can, in fact, score in isolation. It was the question on yesterday's show. We did a breakdown of the Vanderbilt offense. It's a horns kind of setup that they typically run. It's a motion offense. They're going to spread you out. They're going to take a lot of threes. They're not necessarily quick. Uh, they don't necessarily have a lot of tempo, but they're going to shoot the basketball uh, quite a bit. And it all comes from isolation, typically, for Vanderbilt. They're only averaging 11 assists per game. That's awful. That's disgusting. Uh, and I was really curious to see, how does this offense, operate if they just simply don't distribute distribute the basketball well and we saw that in the first half uh, it was really weird to see a team not work well uh, in catch and shoot situations in the half court it's really weird to see shots go up that would tech that would technically be assists and Vanderbilt's players just simply not knock them down uh, Vanderbilt only had nine assists in this game and they still scored 66 points just goes to show you I mean They've got guys on on the roster that can just create an isolation. And one of the guys that we highlighted, and you, you if you watch college basketball at all, you probably know his name, Scotty Pippen Jr., uh, the guard for Vanderbilt, uh, had a season-high 32 points, uh, had two rebounds and four assists to go along with it. He was 11-18 of 18 from the, uh, the floor and 6 of 11 from three, uh, was 4 of 8 from the free throw line. Fantastic free throw shooting from Scotty. Um, but still, that is, um, that, it, it, it was, it was, not great to see Kentucky not be able to hold uh, an opposing team star as we've seen them do in the past. Um, but it was nice to see that even though Pippen scored quite literally almost, yeah, almost dead on uh, half of Vanderbilt's entire point total for the night, uh, they still were not able to get it done. And it was a 12 point win. Uh, for the Wildcats, but at one point this game was a, it, it, I believe it was twenty eight point. It was twenty eight point lead late in the second half, and we're going to talk about some of that and the frustrations later on in the show. But uh, it was it was a great night for uh, for for Kentucky offensively, and then Vanderbilt I think definitely had their moments as well. Just great pacing from these two teams back and forth early on. Uh, at the thirteen minute mark, Oscar Sheepway and Ty Ty Washington had all had all of uh, Kentucky's points. They had seventeen at that point. Uh, and it was it was really nice to see the flow there, and then Vanderbilt started to make a little bit of a run. 
It was eleven. It was a uh, eleven nothing run actually over the span of about four and a half minutes, and they really vamped, r- ramped up the uh, the pressure defensively. Did the Commodores, and it, it caused some problems. I believe there were a few turnovers. Kentucky was 0-5 from the field during that stretch, and Sheepway was out of the game for half of that that eleven nothing run. Then Ty Ty and Oscar, uh, they started to uh, to to uh, combine, try and get some shots up. They were not factors in the offense. The run that Vanderbilt had to, I believe, tie the game, uh, was then followed by a 14-0 run by, in, by Kentucky. And at that point, it felt like the game was over. And again, I know, I know it was early, but it felt like the matchup was just about over after that point. It was Kentucky's pace of play as the game went on. Uh, and I know that Vanderbilt, during that little bit of uh, a stretch, had the momentum there. The game slowed down. The game t- came to them. It was more of a half-court style affair. Uh, but then the more Kentucky started to score, put a little pressure on the defense, or put a little pressure on the defensive end. Vanderbilt kind of looked like they were desperate early, and they started putting a lot of threes up, and they just simply weren't. Uh, I mean, they were knocking some of them down, but it just simply was not enough to to uh, to s- sustain against what was just a fantastic showing from Kentucky's offense. Very efficient. I know that they, they did not uh, hit their uh, average points per game total, but it was a it was a great affair from the uh, Kentucky offense, at least for the majority of the game. We'll talk about the issues in a second. Uh, ESPN's color analyst for the game uh, said something that I said on yesterday's podcast talking about Oscar Sheepway. He's obviously a great th- thing to uh, utilize on the offense, not just getting offense from him, but also using him as a distributor of the basketball. And this is something that the the uh, color analyst said. He said the question with Sheepway is if he's down low and he's working, do you bring a double? Do you bring a double team? And if you bring a double team, what if he passes out of it? Then that puts you into rotation defensively. And then I said, or it just leaves an open shot, right? And, that, and that's what I want to see out of this Kentucky team. As you notice, whenever Sheebway passes out, it's Davian Mintz or it's Ty Ty Washington at, at high on the wing, and then they'll cut, cut back in and they'll start to drive into the paint. What I want to see is Kentucky start to work on some of their spot-up shooting. Davion Mintz shows he has the ability to do it. He played. He's played two fantastic games in a row now. Ty Ty Washington, ha, Ty Ty Washington has that outside shot. Kellen Grady is literally known for that. So if we can try and work some of that in instead of drives off of things that Sheepway distributes outside, I think the offense is going to continue to grow and grow. I mean, obviously it's the leading scoring offense in the SEC, but those are just the little things that you could add on to it. It was 41-28 to 28 at the break, 15 points for Oscar Sheepway, 11 points for Ty Ty Washington. Uh, again, just great offensive flow, great pacing, great rhythm. I loved everything that happened in the first half. I mean, outside of that four-minute span where they didn't score, but still, it didn't feel like Kentucky was really out of the game. And it was just a matter of time before they heated back up again. And then they simply did that. All right, we're going to talk about what happened in the second half in just a second. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Built Bar. It's the New Year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or maybe even better than a candy bar. Uh, Built Bar makes it easy to stick to your New Year's resolution because it tastes so good, you'll actually want to eat it, unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky, waxy, or just plain disgusting. You want to eat healthy, and eventually it just gets so boring, and by like week three, you might be thinking, is this actually worth it? You know, where's the things that taste good? Where's the chocolate? Well, I'm here to tell you, Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Great stuff. And you can compare that to uh, an average candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens and dozens of net carbs. There's so many different flavors to choose from. Uh, with Built Bar, you'll have a hard time choosing. You could get coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel. Cookies and cream and salted caramel are legit. You need to try them out. Mint brownie and so many more. In fact, Built is always coming out with new limited time flavors. So check out Built.com to see what's new. And you can go to Built.com right now and you can use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. Again, just use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by GetUpside. All right, Kentucky fans, let me tell you about an incredible app everyone who buys gas needs to know about, and it's GetUpside. If you have GetUpside, as all Locked On Kentucky listeners should, then you'll be making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time you fill up. Just download the free GetUpside app in the App Store or Google Play right now and use promo code SCORE and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Get cash back using GetUpside. 
Just download the download the app for free and use promo code SCORE to get up to 50 cents a gallon cash back on your first tank. All right, moving along here, second half between the Commodores and the Wildcats, 78-66 to 66 was the final score again. I'm going to flex it again. My final score prediction was 74-66. Uh, I thought Vanderbilt would be able to control this Kentucky offense a little bit better than they did. Uh, but it was just a great shooting day uh, for the Wildcats, and I was, that was just the end of the day. Second half impressions immediately, like I just mentioned. I think Kentucky shot very well from deep uh, in this game. 6 of 13 on the day, that's 46.2% from downtown. Great stuff. Absolutely great stuff, and that's what we love to see. And we That's actually one of my, my things, uh, the, the, the boxes that Kentucky needs to check, one of the four things they need to do actually win in the SEC. Going to talk about that later on, but that's one of the boxes right there. Shooting well. Davion Mintz has played two really good games in a row. And he did not score like he did last game. He had 19 points last game against Georgia. He had nine today. Uh, three of eight from the field, three of five from three. Uh, had a uh, had a, a couple of rebounds and a couple of assists, assists to go with those nine points as well. And look, I'm, I'm not asking for Kentucky's role players, even on the even in the starting rotation, the role guys like Davion Mintz. I'm not asking them to do anything crazy. I'm just asking them to be consistent. And Mintz averages nine points a game. So that's good for him. It, it, it was a great day in terms of what you're asking from your role player. Nine points, three of five from three. That's all I'm asking for. That was great. Keon Brooks, uh, another guy that played his role really well. Had some very solid rebounds in this game. Had five of them, uh, nine points. Uh, was one of two from three. Made a very clutch three with the shot clock, expire, uh, with the shot clock uh, expiring. I believe it was in the second half. Was four of seven from the field. Had a steal, uh, two assists to go along with those nine points and five rebounds. Again, talking about players playing well within their role, uh, Keon Brooks, Davian Mintz uh, playing very well in this game. Uh, Kentucky, down the stretch, just simply handled business on the offensive end. Sheepway played so, so, so well, and Vanderbilt's offense just kind of shut down uh, for a stretch there in the second half. Uh, and, and Oscar Sheepway, I literally put down in my notes here, all I put was Oscar Shibway is unstoppable. And it felt like that at, uh, at one point in the second half. Uh, 30 points for uh, Oscar Shibway, 13 rebounds, one assist, was 11 of 16 from the floor, uh, 8 of 10 from the free throw line. Had a steal to go along with that. Uh, one assist again, if I didn't mention it. And I believe ESPN put a graphic up after Shibway scored his 30th point, and it said that he was the first Wildcat to go for 30 and 10 since. 2001, we are witnessing, and I don't necessarily want to say a generational talent, but we're witnessing some very special things going on with this team. Now, they may not win a title. They may not win the SEC, but they're doing some really, really cool things, like breaking records. Ty Ty Washington, breaking the assist record. Uh, Oscar Shibway, breaking the record for rebounds in a game. I mean, those two alone, and I talked about this uh, I believe it was on yesterday's show. I mean, Severe Wheeler and Oscar Sheway, the com- combination there was deadly. I mean, but Washington has stepped in, and they, it, it, the offense has just not slowed down. And I put a poll out on the uh, Locked On Kentucky Twitter page. If you're not following uh, us on Twitter, at Locked On UK, you could also follow us on Instagram, at, uh, at um, Kentucky Podcast, to put a poll out. So true or false, Kentucky is a better basketball team with Ty Ty Washington running the point. 55% of you said true, 45% of you said false, and uh, 50 people have voted uh, on the poll so far. A little under 50, 50 people have voted uh, on the poll so far. We may check back uh, on that uh, on tomorrow's episode to see what the final results are. And I don't necessarily, this is not a knock on Severe Wheeler. Let me be clear. He's a fantastic point guard. He's not a shooter. He's a great distributor, great descript- distributor of the basketball, very physical on defense. His size, it'll surprise you how physical he can play on the defensive end. Uh, very great at collecting steals. Just a great all-around basketball player was a great pickup for Kentucky. I'm not saying I'm not saying that this is a knock on Wheeler, but Ty Ty Washington at the point, it does not feel like the offense has, has dipped at all because we got 17 points in one matchup. And we uh, let's check his stat line real quick. It, it was a it was a good day for Ty Ty overall. He was knocking down uh, quite a few jumpers. Fifteen points, four rebounds, four assists. Was six of eleven from the floor. Uh, I mean, the offense is playing well right now, and I and I really hope Severe Wheeler comes back as soon as possible so that we can kind of readjust this starting five. But wow, 
Like, I'm, I'm shocked at how good the offense has been playing because that was the question after the LSU game. I was like, okay, um, how are we going to run offense without Severe Wheeler? And we found a way to do it. Now, uh, Kentucky's playing Tennessee here in just a couple of games, and that is going to be a legitimate test to see if Washington is ready uh, to actually play that role if he has to continue to do so. I'm sure Wheeler will be back soon, but that's going to be a huge test. But point being, love the way the offense is run with uh, Ty Ty Washington on the floor. Again, the pacing in this game was really, really solid. Never really felt like Kentucky was truly out of rhythm, and for at least for an extended period of time. And I put that note down, and then immediately after that, a uh, 16-0 run by Vanderbilt just killed that note that I made. It was a 28-point game in the second half, and Vanderbilt just kind of was like, okay, well, if y'all have given up, I guess we're just going to make this as close as possible. It was a 12-point final score. There's something to be said about not putting your foot on the gas. There's also something to be said about not killing yourself, not exhausting yourself, and making sure that your star players are healthy for the next game. I understand both sides of that, but letting a team build a 16-0 run to cut it to 12 at the end of the game is borderline unacceptable, uh, but it's a road win in the SEC, so I'll take I'll take the win regardless is, is my takeaway from it. It sucks. I don't like it, but I'll take the win. All right, we're going to talk about just some final thoughts here in just a minute. Uh, but before we do that, I want to tell you guys about our friends at NetSuite. All right, guys, picture this. This is it, the putt to win the tournament. And if you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're uh, still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software? To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. With uh, visibility and control over your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, uh, NetSuite is everything you need to grow, and it's all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your competition. Over 28,000 businesses already use NetSuite. And for the new year, NetSuite has a new financing program for those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked. Locks. Excuse me. So head to netsuite.com slash locked for this special one-of-a-kind financing offer on the number one financial system for growing businesses. Again, that's netsuite.com slash locked. All right, wrapping up the Wednesday edition of Locked on Kentucky here. Again, really appreciate you guys making Locked on Kentucky your first listen every single day. Final thoughts here. The four things that Kentucky needs to do to win a basketball game. We're going to go over here, uh, go over them real uh, here real quick, and we're going to head out. Shoot the ball consistently. Well, Kentucky shot 52.5% for the floor, and then, like I mentioned earlier, uh, six, of, uh, 6 of 12 from a 3. They have now adjusted that statistic. Instead of 6 of 13, they have now said 6 of 12. So that's 50% uh, dead at uh, that number there. Really impressive uh, shooting from the Wildcats. We checked that box. Have solid shot selection uh, overall. I think that the shot selection in this game was was good. Um, from Kentucky, not a lot of two-point jumpers, at least not that I didn't see outside of Ty Ty Washington, uh, and that's that's good shot selection I'm, in my book. And I mean, hey, if you're shooting 50% from the floor or a higher, it's a good day shot selection wise. Playing well in transition, only 11 fast break points in this game. There weren't a lot of, a lot of opportunities uh, in terms of uh, points in transition, but I think the Wildcats capitalized just about every single time that they could. Uh, eight turnovers a piece for both teams, but 14 points off of turnovers for Kentucky and only seven points off of turnovers for the Commodores. I would say playing well in transition. Uh, I think the Wildcats did so. That's th- that's three things checked off uh, in this game. Protect the rim uh, was is my final thing, and, and it's not necessarily like picking up blocks. It's just making sure that teams don't shoot a high percentage from the floor and making sure they don't shoot a high percentage from two. So Vanderbilt finished the day shooting 42.9% uh, from the floor, which I believe is above their average of 40.7% uh, percent from the floor. And really, our assessment of the Commodores was, we'll let them jack up as many threes as they, as they want because they're not making them at a high clip. And even if they do make them at a high clip, I don't think it's going to be enough to stop this Kentucky offense. At least that was my assessment. I was correct. Uh, Vanderbilt put up 30 threes as opposed to Kentucky's 12. They made 40% of those. So they made 12 of those threes, and then they lost by 12. It was because they couldn't shoot well from the rim. And we saw that time and time again. When when Vanderbilt would get into their isolation stuff and we would see a drive, we would see a floater, we would see something at the rim, it just most of the time wouldn't go in. Just wouldn't go in. Uh, so props to Kentucky for playing somewhat solid defense, but at the same time, I mean, it's, it's not a great offense. So 
I would say that they for the you could you could kind of go iffy on protect the rim because they only had two blocks. Um, but again, it's not necessarily about that. So I would say that that Kentucky overall checked all four of the boxes that they needed to uh, to win this game. So yeah, there's your assessment. Uh, Kentucky victors over uh, over Vanderbilt seventy eight to sixty six. And really quickly here before we head out, I want to tell you about the f- next five games of the season. You get Tennessee at home, then you're at Texas A and M, and I believe Texas A and M is thirteen and two right now. You're at number four Auburn. You're at home against Mississippi State, who was ten and four and only giving up sixty three points a game. And then you're at Kansas. That is a tough, 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 tough stretch. Tennessee. Texas A&M, Auburn, Mississippi State, and then Kansas. Whew, that is that is brutal. And, uh, hey, if you think that I'm hating on Severe Wheeler, said it on Twitter earlier, we stand Severe Wheeler here. We need him back for those five games. Uh, we need him back for those five games. All right, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. Again, you can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. I know what that says down there, down there. Uh, it says follow me on Twitter at Daw Pound. You can actually follow me on Twitter at Lance Daw underscore. Change my username. I'm going to get that fixed in, a, in a, just a little bit. You can also follow the show on uh, Instagram at Kentucky Podcast. Have a great day, everybody, and God bless. <laughs>